Our scripture reading today comes from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 21, verses 1 through 11. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethany, on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and at once you will find a donkey tied there with her colt by her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, say that the Lord needs them, and he will send them right away. This took place to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet. Say to daughter of Zion, See, your king comes to you, gentle and riding on a donkey, and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus instructed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and placed their cloaks on them for Jesus to set on. A very large crowd spread their cloak on the road, while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and those that followed shouted, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, Who is this? The crowds answered, This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. Let's join together in prayer. Precious and loving God, we thank you for the sounds of excitement. Precious and loving God, we thank you for the sounds of wonder. And precious and loving God, we thank you for the sounds of concern. Today, as we look at the accounts of Palm Sunday, of Christ's triumphant riding towards the cross, we ask for you to be real. In your son's precious and loving name, I pray. Amen. Each year I, I share this, this message, and I share in that time of Christ riding towards the cross the different ways that people receive the sounds of excitement that were brewing that day. Today I have a very special example of that, and as I record this, it's the day after San Diego State University beat Alabama to move on to the Elite Eight in the NCAA basketball tournament. And I think about the excitement that I experienced through talking to different church members, some very well aware of the results of yesterday's game. Some not even aware that the NCAA basketball tournament was taking place. And for me, I wasn't watching the game, but I got to hear the results as other members of my family reacted to the victory of San Diego State University being here and Oceanside, California at 1501 Kelly Street in Oceanside. We are a part of San Diego County. We are a part of the San Diego rooting system. We're Padres fans. We're San Diego State University fans. And to have SDSU uh, being a number five ranked team beating the number one ranked team in the tournament to move on, there was a lot of reaction yesterday. But that level of reaction exists in the same levels of reaction that were taking place for Christ on this day as he rides into Jerusalem to head towards the cross. Many, many were like some of our more precious church members the ones that were there waiting to see what was happening. Some of them were in the parade. Some of them were physically at the event, excited to see the outcome of 
the results, excited to see if their heroes would ride in triumphant in their journey. You know, I think about the disciples walking with Christ that day, the ones who threw the cloaks and the palm leaves on the ground as the donkey that Christ rode through the town carried the champion in. I think about yesterday as as those who were waiting to see SDSU be the champions yesterday and ride triumphantly into town to celebrate with them their win and their victory. There were chants of a conquering heroes riding in to the community. And I experienced that yesterday. I called a few members who I knew who would be watching the game to hear their voices of excitement afterwards. Now, there were some people in Jerusalem that day that were more like me. They knew something was going on. I was aware of the NCAA basketball tournament. I even made some phone calls beforehand to church members uh, to catch them what in what I expected would be them still being in a happy state. Hey, you know, if your team's not the top-ranked team, you can't guarantee that victory. You don't always look at the battles as a guaranteed win. But So I called early, but then I, I didn't watch the game. I got alerts on my phone uh, pointing out the results of of the game. I got a text from our local Fox affiliate that that put out the news immediately that San Diego State University won. And I became aware of the events by receiving news about it. I wasn't in the midst of the celebration. I wasn't in the midst of the events. But I did get the news and became aware of what was going on. There were so many in Jerusalem that day as as Christ rode in that they received the news reports. They were there sitting on the fringes, not quite aware of what was happening and what was taking place. And as they received the results, they were received the news, I received the results. As they received the news, they were able to react and even find a place of participation in the excitement. I I found a place of participation in the excitement, checking in with dedicated followers of San Diego State University and and uh, uh, joining in with them in the excitement that they were already a part of. And that's because the news reached me and I was able to respond to that news. Just like so many on that day as Christ rode in the town. Just like so many that day who were not a part of the original excitement but were able to invest into the story from hearing the results. That's where I found myself. But then there's others. And I'll, I'll use this narrative as the Alabama side, the ones that, that, were, that were pretty sure they were going to win, the ones who existed in the top-ranked Society, the ones who were in Jerusalem that day that represented those in control, the ones who represented the ones that knew that the victory was theirs, and whoever this rabble rouser was, that they knew that they had nothing to worry about. But the news hadn't quite gotten to them yet. The news had not quite gotten to them of the reality of what was actually taking place. The news had not gotten to them 
of the following legions of fans that were either already a part of the parade or within the moments finding them their place a part of the parade. Growing and growing and growing in support of what was actually happening. They were the ones that walked in already carrying their victory banners. They were the ones who walked in who underestimated the underdog. And then days later saw who would carry the final victory. Now, by the time that you hear this, and actually by the time that I give this church sermon in our in our worship services in person, so many things could happen. You know, right now, we I could have joined the parade that leads to a great victory. I we look at the other results of the other basketball games that happened yesterday and none of the top ranked teams won. As I talked to dear friends who were celebrating the victories of San Diego State University, SDSU, they saw the possibility of them going all the way through, not just surviving the Elite Eight, but actually making it all the way to the Final Four and then quite possibly a championship game. That's all the possibilities that exist now. And that is all the possibilities that existed as Christ came in. You know, there were the ones that expected to ride with Christ all the way to a victory. And they got that victory in a very, very different way. There were those who joined in the story, and although they did not ride into town with Christ, they found their place a part of that story. And they found themselves riding with Christ all the way to the cross. And then there were also the others who were not a part of the story, who were one of the other teams. And one of the other teams who had their own parade and their own journey to a victory place. And they were looking to stop one journey, so that they can go all the way and celebrate their own victory. Just like this NCAA tournament, all of those stories were taking place as Christ rode on top of the palm leaves all the way to the cross. So today, I pray with you. I pray no matter how the outcomes come, no matter what the results may be, that at the absolute very least, we find our place a part of the greater story. And yes, SDSU may not win the NCAA championship. There were many that rode with Christ to the cross and thought, When the crucifixion happened, that was the end of the story. But as we know, our victories don't always look like victories. As we know from the cross, there is a place in visible defeat that creates a resurrection. And the success yesterday can become a success for a basketball program, and within a defeat, there is a hope for a new beginning. And as we know from the reality of Christ's journey, within his crucifixion creates a resurrection. Hold on to that story and that narrative, and as we journey towards the cross with Jesus Christ, may the peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen.